Welcome to an NCIX Tech Tips introduction to Ivy Bridge E. The E is for extreme or enthusiast or exhaustively researched or epinephrine. There's also epic. And epic. <laughs> Actually, I'm not 100% clear what it stands for, but what is clear is that Ivy Bridge E is the direct replacement for the outgoing Sandy Bridge E. So it uses the same LGA 2011 socket and the same X79 chipset, but it has shrunk from a 32 nanometer manufacturing process to 22 nanometer, and just like when we moved from Sandy Bridge to Ivy Bridge on LGA 1155, we are seeing some IPC improvements. So that is the performance per clock has gotten better since last time around. Now typically in the past, the benefit of moving to a smaller manufacturing process has been better power consumption, less heat output, um, reduced cost, or well, the ability to build more complex chips with the same cost. However, at least one of those things didn't really work out with the 22 nanometer Trigate 3D transistor technology that's being used in Ivy Bridge, and well, henceforth, Ivy Bridge E. So heat output is not dramatically better, but power consumption is better, performance is better, so there's not a whole lot to complain about. The new lineup replaces, okay, replaces the 3820, which was a non-unlocked chip with the 4820K, which boosts up to four gigahertz, that is a quad-core processor with hyper-threading. They're all i7s on this platform. The 3930K is replaced by the 4930K, which is a slight clock speed bump. They all have the same cache as the chips that they're replacing. And then finally, the 3960X and 3970X have been replaced by the 4960X, which is a six core. So we do not get an eight core consumer chip on LGA 2011, this time around at least. But we do have six cores that perform a little bit better, have better power consumption. They all have TDPs of 130 watts, although in practical actuality, the quad core part will run cooler than the other ones. And per core overclocking has now been enabled within the OS in real time, unlike Sandy Bridge E. So from a performance standpoint, you're getting better IPC, you're getting per over core overclocking within the operating system. And well, that's kind of it. But it is on the same socket. If you were buying a system today, I wouldn't say, OK, if you have a Sandy Bridge E system, go run, upgrade to Ivy Bridge E. But if you were going to buy a system today, then there's not really much to say that's negative about it. Sandy Bridge E did unofficially support PCI Express 3.0, something not everybody knows because a lot of add-in cards didn't run in PCIe 3.0 mode on the boards with those chips in them. It was due to some weird stability and compatibility issues, so NVIDIA in particular did not enable that on their cards. However, Ivy Bridge E should address that, so you get 40 lanes of PCIe 3.0 ready connectivity versus 2.0 ready connectivity. The quad channel memory controller has been slightly upgraded, so it now has official support for DDR3-1866 in quad channel. And I think that pretty much covers it. So guys, if you are looking for the very best for certain workloads in gaming applications, LGA 2011 is still not really the way to go. Haswell clock for clock does perform better than Ivy Bridge E. But if you're looking for something that's really heavy duty, whether it's video encoding or video editing or you know, After Effects work, 3D rendering, or any kind of heavily threaded application, Six core is the way to go. If you're looking for a more consumer grade experience, then LGA 1150 and Haswell is probably the way to go and it's gonna be a little bit easier on your wallet as well. So stay tuned and subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips as we have an upcoming upgrade guide if you do have Sandy Bridge and you wanna to move to Ivy Bridge and an overclocking guide coming up soon. Oh my.